Green soil is 10 years old. We've learned a lot. One thing we learned is that it's not so much that we sort of got people to take on solar or rainwater tanks. Society was ready. We just helped provide information. I think that's the key. You've got to be part of the, the national mood. Solar, water, everyone takes it for granted now. It's not new. People are demanding renewables. If you want to see how you start a program from scratch, this is an interesting video to watch. Tiny shoots, making sure the trees don't fall. Green Style is a program funded by the New South Wales Environmental Trust. It comprises three councils, Hornsby, Willoughby and Karingai, and we're bringing biodiversity and sustainability to the people of this area. Over 300,000 people, roughly the size of Canberra, are going to be touched by this program. I, I think that um, everyone's heard about solar, it's on the news every second day, but I think the barrier would be people are keen on doing it but they don't know where to start, where to begin, who do I see, what do I do. By helping people complete the rebates, it's uh, certainly taken a bit of a load off them and made it a little bit easier because water tanks aren't something that people are really familiar with, even though it has become more prominent in the last couple of years. The whole area is booming. Um, we're being told that through various studies. The ACTU has done one, the federal government has done another. It's quite clear that the whole environment industry is, is growing and growing. And it's matched by the, the public awareness of environmental matters, not least climate change. So all of that feeds in. So what we want to do with programs like Green Style is make people aware of biodiversity and sort of help them as much as possible make their properties a haven for biodiversity. It has to be an incentive positive based program, not a regulatory based program, so that people uh, feel totally involved in it. Yeah, I mean, we're, I mean, my husband and I, we've thought about doing things, but it's like, oh, we just don't know where to start. But if someone came out and pointed us in the right direction, that'd be fantastic. Initially, we were going to look at just biodiversity, but when we sat together writing the grant, we realised there was a real need for energy and water as well, which now has caused us another problem. We're going to employ three advisors to go to the people of Karingai, Willoughby and Hornsby, but they're not only going to be experts on weeds and biodiversity, but they have to have their head around water, energy, which means solar and rain tanks and all of this sort of stuff, all the rebates. It's going to be very difficult to find the right people. We have done cold knocks on the door with someone who comes with all the relevant brochures and um, that's been really successful and it's flushed a whole lot of people out for bush care and yeah. other stuff but it is time consuming. So if we had people with different skills that service style three well, classes, is that what we're thinking? Uh, well, whatever period of time divided by three, just We've just had our first meeting and there's a number of obstacles we have to overcome. We have to talk to the contractors, we have to talk to the community, we have to organise all the forms, we have to organise the Green Style Advisors, we have to organise the evaluation. It's, there's just so much to do, we're a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. I just think people think there's probably always a catch to something. Would you mind doing a really quick survey? Like, this is ultra fast. If you want to fill out a questionnaire. Do you live in the area? What we're trying to do now is social research. Does your property include a creek or a water course? Try to develop a program that'll assist residents in the best way. Uh, you'd be 25 to 39? Uh, next one up. Next one up. <laughs> trying to see how people can make their homes and gardens more sustainable. Free home visit from a council officer who would uh, talk to you about lessening your environmental footprint. No. No? No? Fair enough? <laughs> well, I reckon that setting up stalls at uh, festivals is a very slow way to get people. Uh, as soon as you say, council would like to offer you a free surface or something, it's like, oh, council, oh. You know, there's a real barrier to having council do anything for you. The thought that there is no such thing as a free lunch is really, really sort of engaging people so that as soon as something's offered, it's like, where's the catch? And it's very depressing because here we are trying to actually help people. So it makes us wonder, like, how are we going to approach getting people to sort of have visits from sustainability officers? How are we going to break through that barrier? I'm starting to think that the shotgun approach is the way. I don't think there's any one way to get to everyone. I think that turning up at festivals, direct mail, cold calling. I just think you've got to try as many different things as possible because some approaches will work with some people and others will with others. So I don't think there is a, a golden bullet. You come to the people in the middle who are 
uh, if you like, the professionals charged with the job of making change happen. And for them, they are literally a meat, the meat in a sandwich and, and can get very... Um, I can see how they would be frustrated at, at the, the range of duties they have to perform, but also the different perspectives. In a way, it's better for those people in those um, positions to, to put aside their own perspectives in these processes and, and concentrate on how to facilitate uh, the views of others into a process. We've engaged with the community and we've filled out a gazillion forms and questionnaires. Now we want to go to the people who work with uh, the residents in this area. Uh, so it was thought that uh, it'd be good to involve uh, all your people, sort of, there should be significant ways for us to work together. Can you promote it like you, you have, having a property in that high category area, you, you have the honour of being part of the Green Star thing? Or I said, okay, I'll come and see you. Do you have any other neighbours who might be interested to talk while I'm there? And they got the people from both sides to come along. And so yeah. I saw three households at once. And we actually have got some of that information because we gave out surveys, evaluation surveys at the end of workshops. Most of them were time, money and lack of information. Keep it as brief and simple for them as, as it is for you, hopefully. Yeah, and that's why we don't want it this Hi, I'm an officer from Orange County Council at your door, you know. It's like, what have I done? Uh, this DVD can't cover every aspect of how we sort of set this program together. But what we did decide after talking to everyone, the community, the experts, the professionals, we decided that while council workers are at someone's home talking about other programs, it's a fantastic opportunity to talk about Green Style and get them involved in the program. This was the second split. Yeah. It might be nice to say if you're be hard dried out, we might be able to give you a split of one of your... Yeah, which is... We find family. that's a good spot. It gets plenty of summer sun and it gets the winter sun. Mm. Really well. It gets the shade on the hot days. People love their bees. Uh, they're great for pollination. We've got a lot of anecdotal uh, stories about how vegetable gardens have just produced through the roof. It's this is relevant to Green Star because when people join Green Star, we're going to offer them the suite of environmental programs that Council runs in Karingai. Wild Things is one of those programs, and Wild Things actually does native beehives. See the comb there? Yep. And those uh, little honey pots, honey there? Look, I think the biggest obstacle is engaging people who want to be engaged. I mean, uh, the residents we want to get to, a percentage of them have like uh, sustainability fatigue. But at the end of the project, when we look back, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, who did what, whether it was a wise investment of money. Uh, oh, the, these bees, sorry, I just love these bees. The low hanging fruit, if you like, of environmental management does reside in the individual houses. We have such a low uptake of solar hot water, for example. Very few houses have water tanks in the metro metropolitan area. Those are the two things which I think Sydney houses really should move towards. Now the contractor list, you'd think that'd be really, really simple, that, but in fact, the contractor list has been very, very difficult. We've had a meeting with the council ombudsman, we've had a meeting with managers, directors, we've had a meeting with the mayor. There's a big concern about transparency and council being seen to recommend a business over another business. Do I understand the controversy with council having a, a, a partnership with local business? I think the key issue is um, uh, separation and can the, can the actual uh, businesses who are aligning with the Green Style program um, provide the same sort of feeling and empathy when it comes to actually dealing with the, the clients of the council really. Well that's one problem out of the way. We've employed our three Green Style advisors and we meet the first one in a couple of days time. We've got people who do solar, we've got people who do water. We've got bush, two bush regen companies, we've got a landscaper, uh, a nursery, or oh, a couple of nurseries. Okay, now the film comp, you might as well hear a disaster. Yeah. Right. But that's okay, because we've got all the publicity. Oh, this might be uh, Liz. Oh, magnificent. Yeah. I'll be out in a it's second. Really Just a sec. How am I feeling? Good. Yeah, about no, the project. I mean, not, not How about the project? <laughs> do you feel like, do you feel like you're, it's, we Go can on. get this thing off the ground? <laughs> I'm keen to get out there. Like, I'm not locked into anything. If it turns out that you're on fire, and we're not, well, then we're going to start looking it's at It's all about the here. outcomes, how we get the yeah. outcomes. Yeah. So, I mean, this, ma this map shows the Hornsby Creek catchment area, and the red, red line shows the boundary. That's Westfield, Hornsby Station, Hornsby Council, and TAFE. 
So basically you've got all this residential and urban runoff um, and commercial runoff it comes down into the creek line um, and then it flows down and, and ends up down at um, Bob and Head. Mm -hmm. We're looking at private property issues, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. What I expect is with the places that we target, we're going to have people that are not necessarily interested or proactive in getting involved. Mm. So in those ones, there might not be a clear idea about what they want to do. So yeah. we could probably say to them, well, we'll come out to your, to your garden. That'll be a chance for us to point out to them what problems there might be. Willoughby Council, for instance, they've had programs which involve the whole street. If there was an opportunity along a creek line, there might be an opportunity for us to do a supervised planting. Hi. Hi. Things to the park. Talking about green style program. What's it, what does that involve? In, two, in about half a second. <laughs> <laughs> We're helping neighbours uh, who are adjacent to creek lines and bushland. Uh, well, we always pick up rubbish and, and we, you know, I pull out dandelions and things like that as I'm walking through and that sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, you might like to become involved in the program. Yes, we could, we could sure. send you out an application if you like. Okay, well, it's. Yeah. it's um, I can probably no. remember. I think this morning we, uh, we got a great example of um, someone spontaneously who, who wanted to engage with the project. So there's a lot of hope that people will want to do that. But at the same time, um, we also want to engage those people who aren't interested at all because they're the ones that um, have, have the most change to make. And really looking at these areas where there's the overlap between the properties and uh, riparian zones, I think there's a lot of potential not only for people to do work on their properties but to to change their ideas and their perceptions about the natural environment around them and what their garden represents in the context of that natural environment. People don't read notices. People have to be contacted personally. I think actually the three councils involved have very different communities. So I think that it's hard to develop a program that's trying to meet the needs of all these different communities. It would definitely make it easier. I mean, we're probably, if somebody was already at, if came to us as opposed to us going to them. The really good thing about the people who applied for the Green Style Advisor position was they're really, really qualified. They're really keen, they know what they're talking about. And I think they're going to be able to establish a really good rapport with the uh, residents of Karingai, Willoughby and Hornsby. Look, I really think the people in Willoughby, Karingai and Hornsby, they do stuff for the environment in a flash. But it gets down to three obstacles, three major obstacles. The time to do it, the convenience of doing it and the cost of doing it. And you know what? I think the cost is going to be the killer because Green Style is going to take the convenience excuse away, it's going to take the time excuse away then it's just going to be a matter of cost. So if residents are fair income about wanting to make a difference, about wanting wildlife in their yards, about wanting to have a more sustainable lifestyle, well then, are they willing to spend some money? Hello, Peter Park speaking. You beauty. Well, if you hear him scratching around for a story, get him to give me a call. Good on you, Sam. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. So that was just Channel 7 saying would I be happy to do some publicity for them with the local paper. Green Style can use part of this so that if a Green Style advisor goes to a property that sees an unwanted pool, it, it can suggest have you thought about turning it into, into a pond. Once you get shows like Better Homes and Gardens doing it and you can see the aesthetic benefits that turning an unwanted swimming pool into a pond brings, then I think just ordinary sort of people like you and I, they're going to think Gee, we can do this. This is just a really good idea for the environment. And of course, like publicity is our lifeblood for this sort of thing. Sort of, so it's a very symbiotic relationship. They need stories, I need publicity. It would certainly be good if someone was able to give us more information, more background on what was readily accessible and not so insurmountable that you could actually get something done. Yes, I found it a little frustrating that there wasn't, you go into the web and you search solar technology, you search solar heating, whatever, and you obviously get directed to the various products. Um, with the best will in the world, it was actually still quite hard to get it done. Uh, the new advisors, well, they're just bedding down at the moment. I've been uh, hardening up the contractor list. The first few weeks is just like uh, getting ready to unleash ourselves and then bang, it's on. We like the feel of the area as well, like the, the kind of things that they're trying to do to, to get people interested in native uh, bush and stuff, I suppose. If they advertise that rebate, 
more like in some sort of popular media like TV or whatever, then a lot of people would be more attracted to it. Wouldn't you know it, our first screen sale visit was found for us by Better Homes and Gardens. One of our residents watched the Channel 7 show, got very excited and rang us up, our first green sale visit. Now I'm going to take Angus with me. Angus is our green sale advisor for Karingai and I'm going to try and show him the ropes. The water's been aged, so we can actually go straight away to introducing uh, plants, fish. I, uh, I want the kakadu look, if I could. Oh, lush. Yeah. Yep. Lush is... Lilies, pink flowers, that sort of thing. Yeah. The, the you odd crocodile. Yep. Yeah, it'd just be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, lotus aren't a native plant, but I don't see why you have to be restricted to absolutely native. This is a garden, this is your vision, this is your dream, this is your contribution to biodiversity and sustainability. I'm excited. Yeah, and this water. It can be used for irrigation, it can be used for... We could sell it. You could, we could bottle it. You could. What I'll do is I'll come back in a couple of weeks and I'll bring some plants. Has solar power ever interested you? Well, lighting. Lighting. That'd, that'd be cool. Oh, with lighting. Solar power. Would you? Well, Just we've jab them in. We've actually got a company that does. Um... Got a lot of companies. <laughs> <laughs> Our cup runneth over. <laughs> well, look, a lot of companies want to get involved with us because sort of sustainability is big, but. The lifeblood of any company is customers. Yep. If we can find them customers, so it's a mutually beneficial thing. We find them customers, the customers find reputable companies, it's like a match made in heaven. In yep. fact, uh, on our webpage, if you go to greenstar.org.au, uh, we'll, we're going to have all the companies set up. So we're just in the process because the program's just started. In fact, you're pretty well the first cab off the rank. <laughs> you didn't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne, yes. my friend, she saw the program on Better Homes and Gardens, and we got the phone call. And got the phone call, Green and you were here. It was out. like you know, yes. triple O. This is just wunderbar. Yeah, just Put the W into underbar, which I never thought I'd see. <laughs> okay, well I've got some fantastic oh, plants for you. Fantastic. What have you so, got? Well, I've got uh, some uh, sedges, or wow. called twiggy rush. Dwarf tree frogs absolutely love this one. I'll reach wow. in and get it. Yep. We'll just put it in the shallow end on the stick. So on you'll the get step. A, yeah, on the step, yep. That, they're actually going to spread out. Do you leave them in the pot or? Yeah, because that way you manage them. Once we do some landscaping around here, it's going to be fantastic. But it would be great to get rid of some of the obvious weeds. Like you've got that privet over there. It's in what? flower at the moment. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. quite pretty. Well, look, it's, most weeds aren't. Yep particularly like ugly but better and to have it out. you've also got some wandering dew uh, which is sort of good for frogs believe it or not but it is very invasive uh, it's probably you can look at the vegetation you've just got over here it looks really good if you just continue that theme through uh, it, it's look fantastic and you wouldn't have tropical. any weeds yeah now the problem with the weeds is we've got birds who are going to eat those berries and spread them so if we can like eliminate them from yards it just is good for the environment yep. across the board no fantastic Thanks, Janet. That was really, really Thank good. You. Great to meet you guys. For our second visit, we're going to go to Cowan and we're going to visit a resident there who has a real interest in snakes and reptiles and is trying to create reptile habitat at his backyard. Down the track, we're definitely going to put some solar in. Well, with your uh, little card, you can go to these shops and say, here we are. I think, you know, you should get rewarded, you know? And I think the businesses that are supporting this program should get rewarded too. You know? I want to build up sandstone from about here, up right up to here, come out about here, and then that'll just be like habitat for all sorts of geckos. Well, you'd find that an old incinerator is probably useful habitat. Well, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Yeah. I've just joined the diggers club. Oh, yeah, okay. I've got to do like a veggie garden here. Oh, that'd be good. But the rest of the land, I just plan to plant random native, native trees and stuff just for the birds. Right, excellent. Just get around so it's still mould and stuff. Yeah, you'd be looking to put some shrubs in or something. But that, that side of the house up there, it's pretty moist, so I'm going to do ponds for green tree frogs or something up there, or the local frogs anyway. We get loads of birds coming in here for drinks now. Something like this, you, you're actually like setting up to be like a wildlife magnet. Here you've actually got a blank slate. And you've got a perfect irrigation system here. Yep. If you get, you know, for your veggie garden, I'd, I'd seriously be thinking of... Oh, of course, yeah, that's... You know? But in a yard like this, I'd be really tempted to like put in uh, plants I could eat. Like a macadamia nut's really good. We thought of a couple of olive trees. Yeah, what? Really good idea. Love olives. Sort of, and you know, just say you get sacked and you know, things are a bit tight. You can live off your pond for a while. Have <laughs> 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 uh, you got insulation in the home? Yep. 
Balls in roof. Yeah. Soil hot water? No. Uh, recycling? Recycle? Yeah, yeah, recycle stuff. everything. How can you go wrong with a person like that? They're already thinking biodiversity, sustainability. I mean, really, all we're doing is like now putting them into sort of like a group of like minded people in a program called Green Star. I just hope you get lots more like that, Liz. Well, this is good. Our first Green Star visit has actually resulted in a Green Star contractor coming along to work on their pond. And this woman's not only interested in turning a pool into a pond, but wants to do solar and power. We'll create an island in the middle of the pool. <coughs> we'll need some planks across the pool to have good access to the area. <coughs> we need to get some large rocks, possibly vessel block rocks or sandstone, something that's economical, not too expensive. We'll get some large um, logs hollowed out with cavities so it gives an interesting creative sort of effect. We can put the variety of plant species in so you won't see the cage and then they'll no, disperse around out. the edge. Yeah, that'd be great. And with plants, probably for pool we only need about dozen to maybe 15 plant species. Yep. And these are some of the um, uh, water, nice colours, bearing pinks and reds and crimsons. All of those. Uh, <coughs> quite nice. They're beautiful. See that branch? That yeah. branch is about four times diameter. Yes. It would exactly. have much more dramatic Impact. effect. Yep, yeah. Exactly. Yep. So some of the stuff that you, you take to the tip yep. in the next so long, you can charge down for. <laughs> 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 yeah. You notice? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think I just sacked myself. <laughs> <laughs> just been wiped off the email. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. But uh, I think a lot of the landscape features, in fact, can be fairly cheap. You know, um, it's more just imagination yeah. rather than buying expensive That's stuff. That's right. It's not a matter of getting expensive material. Green Style's using not only mail outs and banners and everything, we're also using YouTube and a web page. The advantage of this is we can refer a lot of people to these uh, electronic media and they can get a lot of questions answered without us having to spend 10 or 20 minutes explaining the real minutiae of what we're doing. It really does save a lot of time. Well, we've done the hard yards and now for the fun bit. Uh, we're going to check, check the pool and put some fish in it. We're also going to see if the rainwater tanks have been organised and basically just do a follow up and see if uh, Janet's happy with the way the program's going and if it's uh, performing the way we want it to perform. I just can't believe how good this is. In an area like uh, Linfield, this could be the largest supply of clean, unpolluted water in the whole suburb because all the, tr all the creeks are absolutely trashed. Something like this, you just can't do better for the environment. And look at it. When we first looked at this pool, it was crap. It just looked like an unused, an unwanted piece of rubbish. Now, now you're looking at something that's a landscape statement, something that says, I care about the environment. Oh, look, it's really hard even to have the words to describe how happy I am to see how fantastic it looks. Oh, this is really, really good. I'm going to have a closer look. Maybe. Maybe I'm going to have a closer look. Maybe not. Well, at least we know no child's going to get in here. Or adult. <laughs> it's so beautiful, Janet. So, thank you, Peter. I think you've been amazing. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, actually, uh, we're only as good as the participants. Uh, the fish, we've got Fightail Gudgeon, and they'll actually keep uh, a lot of the frogs and tadpoles under control. Do you want to do it? Yes, I'd love to. So maybe if we do it in the sun, you'll be able to see them sort of... But put it right in the water. What, so the, they oh, don't, the whole pot? Yes. I so, don't pour them? No, because that's sort of like okay. you're going over Angel Falls. There they go. Yeah. Wow. Welcome to Country Gudgeon. Go forth and multiply. You've got a fantastic resource now in your pond. You've done something really, really good for the environment. Yes. You're investigating rainwater tanks to make your property Absolutely. even more sustainable. Uh, you've got the five story units across the road that are being built, but this is like a bit of an antidote to that. Yep, and that's all we can do in life is just go with the opposite yes. Peter <laughs> and create something, yeah, beautiful. Excellent. Okay, so thank oh, you. Thank you. It's been really, really good. <laughs> really, really good. I, I know we can imagine new futures. I know we can do that. But our capability to move quick enough there um, is, is hampered by a range of things. Can we do it? Well, you, you've only got to go back historically to see that we have, in fact, made dramatic and very large changes in the past. So history makes us optimistic that we can change. Six months into the program and things are going really, really well. Green Style has visited lots of residents and it's getting lots of really good feedback. The greatest disappointment is we can't show you the end of the program. That's another 18 months away. But we can tell you that things are going well and we have great hopes for it.
just think it's great To me a tree's a mate Our life would never be the same If we didn't have trees With all their lovely leaves Lifting up their branches to the sky High, 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 I love trees They bring me to my knees To thank the Lord for making trees I love trees With all their lovely leaves Lifting up their branches to the sky High, 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 I love trees They bring me to my knees To thank the Lord for making